So today is our marketing Q&A. Welcome to our quarterly marketing Q&A. Uh, my name is Alessandra Guyman, and I am the marketing and implementation director here at GreenRope. Uh, you can email me at hresa at greenrope.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn um, or Instagram. Um, just let, uh, and you can also follow GreenRope as well on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and join our users group, which I highly recommend for anyone who has not um, joined that users forum yet. So today we're gonna to be just going through, we have a couple of exciting new things. We've got our new sample journeys uh, that you can use that are now in your account that you can use to, um, that you can use to customize and build out your own journeys. They're used uh, for inspiration, guidance. And we're just gonna talk a little bit about why we use journeys, why we use workflows. And this session is really about answering your questions about anything marketing related in Green Rope. Um, and so throughout the presentation, go ahead, input your questions into the chat box or the Q&A box, and I will go through them um, after I go through some of these uh, basic, um, basic topics that I'd like to cover today. Um, so the first thing I want to talk to you about are our new sample journeys. So you now have access to 10 new journey templates that you can customize for yourself, and I will show you where you can find those in just a minute. Uh, you can use these sample journeys as examples and, as, and a guide to create your own customized journeys. And then you can customize them. So customize your journeys so they can be as simple or as complex as you need. A journey can do one thing or many things. Um, so why don't we go ahead and look at um, look at our new sample journeys. And so where you're gonna find them within your account is going to be under automation and journeys. And if you hit the load button, you'll see a folder here called sample journeys. And so if you click on that folder, there's a number of, there's 10 sample journeys that you can use now to, um, to customize for yourself. Um, so I've just built out a couple of examples, and again, I mean, these are not set in stone. You can customize them um, however you need. And so the first, um, so this I, I created as a contact follow-up template. And so the first thing, so for example, if someone um, fills out a form, um, if they, you know, fill out a ticket, you can trigger a journey. So you can automatically send them an email, wait, you know, 36 business hours, which is four days. Um, you can see if they filled out a form, send another email, um, and if they did not send another email. And so these are really just built here to help you um, to help you uh, develop your own and customize your own journeys. Um, so this one is for context contact segmentation, and it's based on job title. So I'm sure a lot of you have different ways that you communicate with certain, with specific contacts or particular part of your audience. For example, in our case, you know, we've got, uh, you know, people who are really heavy on the marketing side and really heavy on the sales side. So how we relate to either of those contacts is going to be a little bit different with the content that we send them. Um, and so one way that you can segment your mm -hmm. contacts with, a, with using a journey is by a title or with any user defined field within your account. So for example, decision, the title contains marketing. And again, this is just an example. And you really have all, you know, every user defined field at your disposal, not to mention all of these actions, opportunity statuses, statuses, and then of course your standard fields and your custom user defined fields. Um, and so in this case, we're doing our title is or contains. And so we wanted to do marketing. Um, make sure you spell it right. And if they're in marketing, then we are going to send them a marketing based e email. Then we're going to delay nine business hours 
did they read or they click on the previous email and then we'll activate a workflow if they did read or click on it or we can we'll send an email if they did not and then they go through the same process um, another thing that you can do if you want to trigger a workflow right when someone reads or clicks on an email that you send you can also trigger a workflow right from within this action um, so that happens all at one time versus having to this delay here that's nine business hours. And the important thing to remember about delays is delays allow something to happen. So as soon as, um, so if you don't have a delay and you only, if, so if you take out this delay and you just immediately put it to your decision, connect the action to the decision, then this is going to happen within a second. And then it's automatically, once this is sent, going to ask, did they read or click? So it's not giving the user or the audience any time to actually do anything. And so, and that becomes really important, you know, if you're waiting for, um, if you're waiting for something specific to happen. I know we've all been in a situation where, um, you know, we've seen an email to buy something, you know, let's say first thing in the morning, we don't have our credit card available, we want to look at it later. Um, and so that's kind of an example of where this would come in handy, is you want to be able to give someone time to actually do the action before deciding whether they've read it or they've done that action. Um, because that will help you better personalize the journey, um, personalize the entire experience. So, you know, instead of, the, oh, they didn't buy right away, um, but then you send them another email and they're like, yes, yes, I know. I'm planning on buying. And, and so this way you actually give them time to do something. And so delays are really important. And keep in mind delays, I mean, you've got a lot of mm -hmm. options for delays as well. Um, so you can delay until a specific date and time, until the contact's birthday. Um, and so if you want to send birthday cards, um, date defined uh, by a user field. So if you have a specific user field, so this might come in handy with renewal dates for memberships. Um, until business days before an opportunity close date. So if you have an opportunity close date, you can send them an email before that projected date. Um, until a document is signed. So if you send a document via our system and you want something to happen once a document has been signed um, you could delay until then um, until a link is clicked until an email is read or clicked a uh, local day of month local day of week and local contact time and so you have a lot of ways to customize uh, those delays but they are really important so keep in mind when you are building out those journeys um, so that is really the big um, the, the big new update in our journeys feature is having those um, or, or having those templates. Um, and so there's really something for everything in here. And again, they're really just examples that you can take to customize. So we have one for surveys, website visits and our conversions. Um, you know, so if they converted with a certain conversion code, so let's say they went from, you know, stage one to stage two in your funnel or stage two to stage three. Um, so that can, you know, that can customize a journey. Um, you can remove a contact from multiple groups. And so that's important. For example, if someone becomes a client, you can automatically remove them from a you know, leads group or a trials group. That's really important so that you don't continue to, you um, you know, send them the stuff that you're sending your leads or your trials or your prospects. Um, there's again, a couple contact segmentations in here, a general ebook, download form mm -hmm. submission template. Um, and so there's lots for you to choose from. Um, do we have any questions so far? And it looks like we do. Um, Andrew, can you explain what the dates are at a decision um, screen? Did date through date um can you explain that a little bit more sorry i'm not completely understanding the question i'm assuming you're talking about the delays um and then andrew also says i'm interested in using surveys and quizzes as lead magnets using these as a personal discovery or prospects that result in moving them into a further discovery journey their response their individual responses into this quiz 
These start as cold marketing contacts, so they are probably not in the CRM yet, but we want to be able to tie the responses to their contact information if they decide to continue. Um, so that's a great question and it's something you can actually do via journeys. Um, and I did see that you um, further explained your other question, so I'll get to that in a minute. So with surveys, so you can create a survey and if you want to, um, personalize their journey based on their survey responses. So when they come in, you have them take a survey, then you, I mean, to tie their survey information, they're gonna have to be input into your CRM. Um, and so I'm interested in how you're delivering the survey, assuming probably on a landing page that maybe at the end of the survey has a form that they input, um, that they input in and so as long as um you eventually put them into the crm um and they we can associate that with their with their survey responses then that'll be tracked in the crm um but to so the first thing here is did they respond to the survey so this decision is did they respond to a survey and you can choose the survey that you have and if yes did they answer a survey question and you would choose the survey question and then you would choose the answer and then you can activate a workflow based on that specific answer. And if they did not, um, then you can also, of course, personalize the journey in that way as well. Um, and so you can see here, answer this survey question. If it's true, activate this workflow. If it's not, did they answer it this way? This way? Um, if that's true, you can activate a workflow. And if it's not, you can you know, send them an email. Um, or here, if they didn't even respond to the survey um, and you have their email in this case, then you would be able to send them an email perhaps to go take, um, take that, uh, to take that survey. And then you wait 48 hours, did they respond to that survey? Um, and so you're able to, um, so you're able to kind of customize. This is very simple. Of course, you can build this out as much in, or, you know, as long as you need with as many survey questions and as many decisions and delays and actions. Um, but this is just an example of what you would, how you could use that for surveys. Um, And then here, let's go back here. Can you explain what the dates are at a decision screen? Date through date refresh on the right side of the screen with the decisions. Okay, so let me pull up a decision. Um, oh, so this is just going to be, um, so this actually is for, um, for tracking when the decision is actually there. So let's say this is a live journey and I want to do some tracking on it. So this would be a filter to filter out the dates in which I'm looking at what point someone hit a journey. So if I wanted to see if they someone answered, you know, whoever answered questions or whoever read an email within, so it's, you know, within a specific time frame. So that's gonna be for tracking. So that's gonna be relevant when the journey is actually live. Um, how about a total score on the survey? So you can do that with lead scoring um, as well. So you're eight, oops, sorry, I got one. So you can also do that with lead scoring. Um, so here you can have responded to a survey, answered a survey question in a specific way. Um, and then you can also do like, for example, if you have, if they get a specific lead score, so you can associate a score with, um, with your surveys, and then you can input that into a user defined field. And so you can have a sur survey score as a user defined field and use that as a decision. I hope that answers your question, Steve. Um, Andrew, we really like the personalization in the journey section, but confused about how their name is connected back to their survey after they are finished. Um, and so it's, well, it's done via their email address and IP address. So as long as you have their email address within the system, it, you know, even after they've submitted, um, they'll be able to, the, we'll be able to associate that contact with that particular survey. Um, the easiest way, so I, this might be a more specific um, use case, 
um, in which you might want to contact me or our support team to get a you know more in-depth answer on surveys in particular, especially if you're using them as a lead magnet and then at the end giving a um and, and at the end having them sign up on a form. Um so um, shoot me an email and we can discuss that. Uh, just uh, I want to understand your process fully. All right. Um, so any other questions about our sample journeys that we have? And again, you can definitely um, use and customize them as much as you need. So it is they are, again, just there as a guide for you. Um, so a couple other things I wanted to just touch on here are, you know, why we use journeys. And so I often get asked, why would I use a journey versus a workflow? Um, and so how I simplify it or how I discuss it with our clients is journeys are really customer facing. They're used to develop, develop customer facing processes. And so we use journeys for lead nurturing, onboarding, sales, and more. Um, and they're really good for personalizing a uh, the way you interact with customers, again, using those decisions and delays. And so, so mm -hmm. much of how a journey progresses is based off of what the actions of the is it based off the actions of the customer or the lead themselves. And so it's not like while you're creating you know, a specific path, it's really up to the contact which path they go down based on their own decisions um, and their own their own behavior. And so that's why they're so great for personalization. Um, and that's why I always say like with lead nurturing, like well, drip campaigns might be useful. They're really not going to be able to allow you to personalize um, in a way that a journey would. Um, the customer experience um, is really able, you're really able to build a personalized, streamlined, and effect, effective customer experiences using journeys. And I love, I mean, the whole aspect of streamline, like, because while people can veer off onto different paths, it's a streamlined process. So no matter what path they're going, down, there's a defined set of things that happen um, within, you know, that they experience as well as uh, what happens internally. And that's where we get to workflows. So workflows are really internal facing. They're used to build internal processes. And so we use, and most companies will use workflows to alert team members, trigger journeys, update data, assign CRM activities, and a lot more. As if you're you know, in Green Rope a lot, you know the, what the power of a workflow. And I always say they're like a recipe and a, they, they tell you what happens. They streamline the process. So every time a workflow is triggered, the exact same thing happens. And so this allows your team to really streamline their processes. Nothing slips through the cracks um, because literally the same thing has to happen each time that specific workflow is triggered. And if you have them set up to automatically trigger, now you're, you're automating a lot of that um, streamlined process. And of course, that can create consistency. And consistency is critical for both your internal and customer facing operations. So let's see if we've got any more questions about that. And again, this session is all for you guys, um, for me to answer as many questions about, you know, anything really marketing related in the system. Um, you know, I know that we use journeys extensively, um, and I really advocate that our users um, use journeys, ex ex excuse me, extensively as well, um, because they are so powerful. And mm. there, there are so many different ways in which to to use a journey and to customize a journey. And again, I mean, there. I mean, you can use them for when a form has been submitted, when a document has been sent, a survey has been answered, you, you know, have an ebook download, um, et cetera. 
And so one thing I would say too, if you're doing like a lead magnet with a survey, typically in most of the surveys that I've seen, you submit your email at the top to continue the, through the survey or you enter your email to get your survey results at the end. And so either one of those would work. Steve, that clarified the difference. I think I finally got it. Good, Steve. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that is how I explain it to all of the, the clients that I work with. Um, and I think that it does really do a great job of explaining um, the difference between workflows and journeys. And, you know, even though, you know, they're very involved together, um, they both accomplish two very different things. And, um, and so it really comes down to your own, um, your internal process and then your customer facing process. And I did include a couple more notes here. I just want to check if there's any questions. Um, I did include a couple more slides here and I have presented on this before, um, but just to kind of refresh everyone's mind, um, you know, until I get some more questions. Uh, so again, your recipe for automation, um, so a workflow is like a recipe for automated processes. It allows you to set up all of the ingredients to help make a complete meal. A workflow is really the foundation of your automated process. And so, you know, they're a defined process, they're triggered and they trigger. Um, so workflows can be triggered by any number of actions such as form submissions, contact data changes, opportunity phase changes, a journey drip campaign and more. And um, they can also trigger a number of different things. And now something, some one thing that I know that some of our clients will get confused by is, um, and so I'm just going to use the example of a sign-up form. And so let's just say take a basic website, a website uh, contact form. So in our options, um, we have a ton of different, um, like upon confirmation. So as soon as they confirm their emails, we have a lot of different options here. And so you can send an email, immediately follow up, activate a workflow or start a journey. And so a lot of people get a little bit confused by that because they're like, oh wow, well, I wanna start a journey and a workflow. So should I do, should I start the journey here? Should I start the workflow? Should I start the journey within the workflow? And that's both, that's the beautiful thing about GreenRoad, but can also sometimes kind of overwhelm someone because there's so many options of what you can do, but it's just a way for you to make the system as customizable as possible. So my recommendation in this case is I like to associate everything within one. So if I have a website contact form, I'm usually going to just activate a workflow here. And that's gonna be like new website contact, um, you know, new website contact form fill workflow. And that workflow will trigger a journey, it'll send an alert and maybe have a CRM activity. Mm -hmm. That way it's all within one workflow versus having a workflow and then assigning the journey here. And while that's totally possible and there are use cases for that, my preference, if I can keep it simple, is to, to keep everything within a specific workflow. Now, a best practice for workflows, which I highly recommend everybody, um, everybody do, is in this notes section, is you wanna know, first of all, how is this workflow triggered? So put, you know, triggered, how is it triggered? So let's just say that, um, new website form fill and what does it do so it alerts marketing team um adds them to leads group triggers new website contact journey and adds a sales CRM activity. And so now in this workflow, in my notes, I have everything 
what, how this is triggered and what it does. So anyone within your organization can go into a workflow and be like, oh, okay, this makes sense. This is how it's triggered. This is everything that it does. Instead of having to go through, you know, your, okay, so it goes through your alerts. You know, does it send an email? Does it trigger a journey? Um, you know, conversion codes, modify contacts. So this is where I would have it add to a group, um, a company activation or any work, uh, any activities. And so it's really important. Um, and it, again, to each his own, this is just my best practice. And it's something that I you know, try to train all of our new employees on that if they ever have a question about any workflows or anything. Um, and we have a ton of workflows. I am telling you, we have so many, but they're very organized in folders. Um, they all you know, say exactly what they do. And that way there's really no confusion um, as to what any workflow does, if it's needed, if it's being activated, all that stuff. All right. Um, are there any other questions? Y'all are really quiet today. Unless I'm just doing a really, really good job of explaining. Um, unless I'm just doing a really good job of explaining journeys and workflows. And something to keep in mind as well. Um, and I can kind of go through a little bit more of this as well. Um, with your benefits. So benefits of workflows, we kind of really talked about that. Um, we just went through a workflow. So each tab. And so journey, again, it's that customer facing predefined path. You know, and so our benefits, visual representation, they create personalized experiences, automates otherwise manual processes. And if you guys are interested in these slides, I'm happy to share them. Uh, just let me know. I can definitely send those out. Um, again, these are examples of different journeys that we have within our system. Um, and then these are uh, some other of my best practices um, is write it out. So I am a huge fan of pen and paper. But, or a Google Doc, and just the first, the before I do anything, whether it be create a workflow, a process, I write everything out. And so I have, um, I can actually probably show you. Um, let me, give me two seconds. So I, how I actually create an entire process. Um, and what it, what the very beginning, um, steps look like. Okay. So let me go back here. So when I'm building out an entire process, um, it's really important for me um, to have a it laid out. And so when I'm building a you know like a new campaign, I have my list of workflows, any user find fields, tags, journeys. So what journeys and what decisions, uh, groups. Um, what the drip campaign is going to be or emails and then my to do list. Um, and so that's just an example of how I sort of start with my planning before I'm putting together any workflows or journeys. Um, Andrew, uh, can you run an audit to see where workflows are used? Um, so the easiest way to do that, so there's really not a way to audit that you can go into. So the easiest way to be honest is going to be here in the number of times it's been activated. Um, and then you can also, if you go into your automation manager and go into workflows, 
and pull that down, you can look at all your different uh, workflows here as well. Um, but I usually just say how many times they've been activated and then I go into them and clean them up if needed. So that's why it's always good to really start doing that. But I mean, I've had to go through a number of our workflows and that was something I did at the beginning of the year and really cleaned up everything is in folders and has that, um, the, that, the, that note section that I do. All right, any other questions? And one thing I guess I'd like to ask is would you, um, would you guys be interested in me putting together sort of a process brainstorm or like a template of how I, what I do to actually create my campaigns and um, the automated processes that I set up in Green Rope? Because if that's something that you would like, um, I'm definitely, can definitely put something together okay yes that's a yes um awesome okay i'll put together sort of almost like a, a workbook format would that be something you guys would like um and it can you can basically maybe you know i can build it out and i can make them in, put them in your wiki and you can it'll just kind of ask the questions you know like what's the purpose what are your workflows um you know and ask all the, the questions so cool um, I'll put something together and then maybe on another one of our Q&A or um, send it out to this group to review and see if it's something that you guys um, are like or if it needs more information or something like that. Um, all right. Does anyone have any more questions for me today? If not, um, we are going to do our raffle. And again, um, if you, uh, our raffle winner um, gets, um, receives a free training, one-on-one -on -one training session, as well as a um, seat in our, for our certification, if you haven't already done that. All right. Uh-oh, the spinning. Oh God. Who is it? Steve. All right. Congrats, Steve. Um, and that's great. You've had a lot of questions and today. So that's really exciting. So yeah, so you'll get a free training session. And if you wanted to be focused on workflows and journeys, you know, just let our training team know. And, um, you know, we can definitely set something up as well. Um, and you can have a one on one with myself for that if you'd like to do that. <laughs> Steve, yeah, you did it. Um, Nicole, uh, where can I use the raffle spinner? Uh, yeah, Nick, you were really close. Um, Nicole, I will have our team reach out and let you know where they they came up with that. It's pretty cool though, right? Um, <laughs> Nick, maybe next time. Keep coming to our Q&A sessions. And um, oh, it looks like Melissa just put that in the, uh, just put it into the, um, the chat box as well. And here, I, was, I had my video on earlier. Um, so, Awesome, guys. Well, I really appreciate everyone and all of those amazing questions. Uh, again, journeys and workflows are probably one of the most powerful features of our system. And I encourage, and, I mean, there, and there's so much that everyone can do with them. And so I really highly encourage people to learn as much about them and get them set up you know, to, to help them with their process. I mean, there, they, there's just so much you can do with them. And so the more that I can help people um, understand them and um, can and understand the power and uh, the, what you can actually do with them, the better. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out to me, our support team, um, Steve. Uh, Melissa will be in touch with the training. And then again, just request if you want it to do one-on-one -on -one with me for 
um, like journeys and uh, workflow stuff, we can absolutely do that. And um, Nick, come back next time and maybe you'll be our next winner. Um, and remember, I do these um, once a quarter and, um, and I'll probably be doing some more webinars as well. And I will also, uh, based on your feedback today, start putting together some templates like brainstorming campaign templates uh, that you guys can use to actually build out sort of the initial process because that is my number one um, tip is just like don't go in and try and build it in green up without actually having it written down somewhere uh, just because there again there's so much that you can do that you're just you know you get all over the place with that so um cool yeah never give up um Awesome, guys. Well, just let me know if, again, reach out if you ever need anything. Uh, we are here. And you can always um, contact us, contact myself, support at Greenrope, or implementation at Greenrope if you are interested in some consulting hours or if you'd like us to set up any processes for you. Um, we do have a team that does that. I am uh, the director on that team as well. And so I've ha helped. Um, so many of our clients with their journeys and their workflow processes and get them set up and dialed in and, you know, in so many different ways. And so I'm really, um, you know, our, our team is here to help you um, access those services as well. So thank you for joining me today. And I will see you guys soon, hopefully.